Hello and welcome back to Oxygen Not Include. Let's play episode uh, 174. I've decided that this is going to be the last gameplay episode of the series. I'll do one episode after this as a sort of base showcase and like an epilogue where I go over sort of lessons learned from the base, build ideas, things of that sort. Um, but this episode is going to be focused on two things. One, kind of going around the base and cleaning things up, mopping up any you know spills that we've left over anywhere, going through and making sure that all our systems are working. So for example, uh, this one down here, uh, I don't have power because I ran out of natural gas. So I want to hook up that system here to not have this flash to steam, which is really bad for us. Uh, we don't want this to get to 120 degrees. Um, but yeah, I'll hook up the rest of our natural gas. Just going around making sure that all of our systems are sort of working as intended, uh, that everything is going hunky-dory, and making sure that we kind of clean up any like scraps of stuff left over. So for example, if I go to power overlay, anything that like to, like this doesn't connect anywhere, right? I just wanna go ahead and deconstruct this. So that's gonna be number one. We're gonna go around and just clean up stuff around the base. Uh, anything that isn't necessary anymore. This is not necessary. We don't need this. We don't need this. Uh, if I go to the power view, we can go ahead and deconstruct all of this wire as well. All right, cleaning up all this stuff, uh, that's gonna be Objective number one and objective number two is to talk about one sort of last thing that I wanted to get to uh, Before I closed out this let's play and that is sort of my hope for Things that clay will balance and introduce before they release the game Because I think the game does have I think three kind of significant balance issues and I think that uh, it also could be helped out by just a few extra little additions not anything major just a few extra things that you could do um, that would make things go, that would allow you to customize your game experience a little bit better. Uh, as I'm doing this, I'm also, I guess, going to go around and, since my food is relatively low, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give an order to dig out any sort of slime that I run across. And I'll probably dig out a little bit more coal, but basically just go through and clean up stuff for the most part. Okay. So, um, what are things, what are the balance changes that I think need to be improved about the game? Well, the first major thing, and I know this is going to sound weird because at this moment we're kind of in a power free fall in the base, right? Because I, uh, I, I haven't been, uh, I've been keeping my hatch population down, so I haven't been producing as much coal as I normally would, so I've been running a little bit low on coal. Um, but Power is one of the big things that just is a little bit too free in this game. Like, I haven't even really began touching in any significant way our huge oil resources. Um, I haven't really touched much of our natural gas, right? Um, I've mainly just been living off of coal. And frankly, if I had just, um, you know, kind of kept up with the coal, then I wouldn't even be short of coal right now. And this is 725 cycles in with a gigantic base, right? There's there's all sorts of stuff going on in this base, and never once has power really been much of an issue at all. Um, I haven't needed to use the power room, right, and get the bonuses from that because it's just kind of gratuitous. Uh, so I haven't even really needed to build any sort of centralized power facility. Um, I feel like a lot of the a lot of the options in the game are just too good. And in fact, I mean, we're still just using coal, which is one of the first things, like if I go to research, coal is right here, right? It doesn't even require any advanced research to unlock, and it's probably one of the easiest power sources in the game. It's really simple to use. Once you get smart batteries, it's really efficient. Um, you can turn pretty much anything into coal with the use of hatches. So, yeah, uh, I think that it's just a little bit too strong. And I think that there should be just in general either less power released from a lot of these uh, sort of technologies. Uh, deconstruct this. Less power given by a lot of these technologies or more power used by sort of the later game technologies. Um, Right, that a lot of the, the stuff that you build, like thermal regulators, should cost you more power, uh, is one option. Or there should just be downsides. Like, if coal produced more CO2, 
or required you to burn oxygen in order to run it, then that would be really interesting, right? If you took some of these really good power sources, really cheap power sources, and added some extra challenge to them, where there's just some, some extra element that you need to take care of, um, I think the game would be better off for it. I know that sounds weird to say that, oh, I want the game to be harder, but there are just, I mean, the, the power issues in this game are just a little bit too easy to solve, I think. Um, and you really don't have to conserve it. In fact, in a lot of the game, um, you just want to use up power because you want to convert things like oil into water, which you'll then use for other stuff, right? You want to convert natural gas into polluted water and that sort of thing. And so you just get these issues where there's not, there's not as much of a challenge as there should be um, because power is just so cheap and so free that you don't really have to consider a lot of a lot of other stuff, right? I would like to see it change to where there's new downsides, right? Things like um, your coal consuming oxygen, right? Your your that it needs some something to combust with. Um, but if they just increase the power cost of the later tier buildings, I think that would be a pretty good step, right? Um, and reducing some of the, the power output of maybe the early tier stuff, right? Your hamster wheels and your uh, your coal generation, I think would go a long way towards, towards improving that. Um, the other big major balance thing is deodorizers. I mean, we do, you've, we've used them to great effect here with, in combination with algae terrariums, but this is just such a cheap and easy way to convert polluted oxygen into oxygen. Right, it, it's it's a little bit overpowered. In fact, it it takes it takes a pretty much worthless resource, sand slash regolith, and it converts it into uh, clay, which then becomes ceramic, which is one of the best um, one of the, the the best insulators in the entire game, right? And it's I feel like there needs to be a little bit more challenge in terms of how you set up a deodorizer. Like, I, I think that um, that whole process of that it takes in a filtration medium and puts out clay is fine. Um, I, I kind of maybe prefer if there's a way to, like, make dirt, right? Currently, the make process for making dirt is really complicated. Um, and, and since that's what you do to make a lot of foodstuffs, it's just sort of, sort of like you have to go this, down this weird industrial path to set up um, just, you know, normal, regular... Uh, production of uh, things like sleet wheat, right? That's actually the real challenge of sleet wheat is not the temperature controlled environment. It's it's finding dirt on a scale large enough to, to feed all your people. Um, the other, do I have, this is not quite built. Okay, uh, ventilation, gas pipe, igneous rock, connect this up. Priority eight. Let's get this system back online. Um, oh, and while I'm at it, let's go ahead and uh, get our oxygen supply re-enabled. All right. Um, I'd like to see, like there, there be like these deodorizers have them be less efficient, something along those lines. Have them just like not be as good as they are right now that they, they basically catch everything they, they convert things really easily and instead have some sort of powered option or an option that requires you to put in polluted uh, oxygen and, and have an, another separate technology for it um either that or require these to use something better of a resource have them require power have them at least require metal i mean right now building a deodorizer just costs you a hundred of any construction material that's nothing, right? Like we have hundreds and hundreds of tons of, uh, of construction materials, right? Raw minerals, I have, I have 2,000 tons that, that it costs me 100 kilograms to make a deodorizer that I can stick it anywhere at all, right? No problem. Um, seems just a little bit, a little bit much, right? Like that, that's a little bit too far in my view. Uh, wrong elm. Okay, it's mostly oxygen though. There's a little bit of CO2, that's fine. I can live with that. Um, the fact that there's just so easy to spam everywhere, I think it trivializes some of the other challenges in the game. So for example, germs, right? Slime lung and things like this. You just go into a slime biome 
and you say, hey, I'm just gonna, you know, turn all this into, uh, I'm just gonna turn all this into oxygen, right? You don't really have to do any sort of clever thing with it. It's just, boom, it's all oxygen now, right? You send a guy in, maybe he gets slime lung, maybe he doesn't, but you, you don't have much of anything as a challenge there, right? You can just immediately disinfect an area. Things like that are just a little bit too much for me, I think. Like, I, I think that deodorizers just need to be toned down a little bit and then have another option which is sort of better for larger processes or something like, right? Nerf nerf the deodorizers as they exist right now and create a new option to convert polluted oxygen into oxygen that has some other trade-offs, has some other thing going on. Um, let me just quickly... I think I just want to vent a lot of this stuff out to clear this line. Let's just go gas valve, iron was fine, uh, boom. High pressure gas vent, uh, gold's fine with me. Cracked up like this. Um, yeah, deodorizer's just too strong. You get them way too early. They reduce almost to nothing your, your risk of having problems with slime lung. Um, they, in this case, I mean, one algae terrarium can supply oxygen for basically three dupes because the deodorizer is so good, right? Like, the, one algae terrarium, I'm still using algae terrariums for my oxygen because it's, it's and I still have uh, 46 tons of algae without really any effort to go and collect more algae, right? Like, I'm not scouring the map for algae at this point. I've got big chunks of it lying around in various locations if I can find out where, where I left them. Right, I've got a bunch here. Uh, I've got some around here, I've got a big pocket here, right? Like, there's tons of algae left, and I can still just use algae terrariums to produce all my oxygen because deodorizers are so efficient. Because they produce polluted water, I can just have a, a, a setup like this, and it's just insanely efficient. Um, just really way too efficient. Let's go ahead and turn this system back on. And let's also allow people in here to store any ice that they want to put in here. Do I have ice left? I might not have ice left. But if there's any ice, they can go and shove it in there. Um, yeah, it's just, it's too good. It's too strong. The last thing that I think really needs to be uh, nerfed, buffed, whatever, is... Yeah. It's these bristle blossoms. These bristle blossoms, when they flower, produce floral scent. Okay. I need to keep that in mind for my allergy dupes, because that's a big thing. Right? Bubbles is the one stressed out. And every time she stresses, she stress eats, which is also hurting our food situation. So that's like an awkward thing to uh, to worry about. But we'll we'll, f we'll work on that in another, another time. Anyways, um, I just did confirm, though, that it is, it is the bristle blossoms that are producing this is what we thought. It's only when they flower, though. Only when they're, they're done growing, basically. Um, activate if 90. You know what? Activate if 85, actually. Just get this going again. Um, okay, yeah. Um... The other big thing that needs to be changed, I think, is regolith production. There is... It, it's not a necessarily huge problem in terms of just, like, answering the challenge from a gameplay perspective, right? Um, there, there's a lot of things that you can do to tackle the regolith deposition that you have on the surface. Um, right, you can just... We, we've had just guys going out and mining it, which is fine. But if you look at how much it stacks up. Right, I have 707 tons of regolith, and that's not even counting all this stuff that is stacked up here. There's tons more regolith buried underneath this regolith. Like each one of these little, you know, these cracks, it has more stuff in it. There's a buried object in it. It's usually, what's happening? This is, you're scalding here? What happened? How are you scalding here? Water's not nearly hot enough. Apparently the gold did something? I don't know. You're not still scalding, are you? Okay, good. Um, yeah, once this turns on, this temperature will improve and we'll get our pinch pepper nut going again. Um, 
What was I going to say? Yeah, the, the, uh, there's so much regolith. And if you actually were clearing the surface, right, like you were using your surface for something, you'd quickly just end up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons of regolith. And, you know, it, it's, it's a challenge. I, I get it for um, you going into space. You need to be able to do something with it, clear it, auto mine it, whatever. Um, but the issue is that for late in the late game, it, it produces so much lag. Right, because you just have all these things of regolith that you have to deal with, that um, it, it can be a real base killer. Right, I feel like they either need to reduce the amount of regolith that spawns on the surface, or give you better options for how you deal with that regolith. So, for example, um, having the regolith be able to it be, be something that you can turn into glass, or even better yet, um, taking the uh, the glass forge that we have down here and adding just making it like a forge and adding a um, another fabrication that it can do which is that it produces um, it, it can produce magma from regolith or something along those lines magma from igneous rock magma like as long as you can consume regolith in some fashion right to um, to produce something else then I think it would be a little bit less less of a problem. Right, maybe you can create something that keeps up with it, but I, I think it's actually going to have to be a combination of all those. Right, that you're going to want to reduce the amount of regolith that spawns on the surface, um, and, but also have tools that can deal with the regolith that is spawned, uh, and not tools like shovels. Right, there's some shovels roaming around over here um, because shovels themselves add lag to the system. You're not really getting ahead when you use shovels to control all that. Right. So that's those. Those are sort of balance changes that I would like to see. The other thing I would like to see um, is, is a few new features. And nothing really that major, but just little little things that I think would make um, a pretty big difference in terms of being able to customize your game and play it how you want. Um, so for example, I think that there should be more options when it comes to... Uh, more options when it comes to starting your base like being able to customize your world generation settings um, maybe even have different like size options for your world uh, but also having being able to bring the duplicates that you want right a, a lot of times if there's if there's a specific set of duplicates that you want you have to click the reroll button like a million times to 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 get what you want right and it's just a tedious process takes a lot of time isn't really a point to it Right, like there should be a way to just customize the duplicates that you get at the start. And some people would just they'll say, you know, give me any three duplicates and I'll go with it, and that's fine. Um, but uh, I think there's there's a decent number of us who would like to see, at least for some playthroughs, right? We'd like to see the ability to customize your uh, your duplicates starting out, and we don't currently have that ability, and it's a little bit of a little bit of a pain. Right? Again, it's just a lot of clicking a lot of the times for not really any sort of gain, right? Uh, deconstruct, deconstruct, and deconstruct. Okay. Um, so new world customization options, uh, new duplicate selection options, and then also I think better, um, better variety in difficulty settings like right now the difficulty settings don't really fundamentally change the way that you play the game um, they kind of make you be a little bit more strict about certain things right if you have compromised immune systems you really have to be more careful about germs if you have um, you know stress problems and you really don't want your dupes running through water and things of that sort but it uh, there isn't really a huge fundamental change on a lot of the difficulty settings um, there isn't really a huge fundamental change on a lot of the difficulty settings because um, you just don't end up encountering any any new novel gameplay, right? Nothing really emerges from those changes, right? Um, you can really amp up the amount of food that your duplicates need to eat in order to survive, right? But that just means that you end up spending a lot more time farming. Right, and the, the gameplay is just slower. It's not really more challenging, it's just slower. You just have your duplicates spending more time 
gathering food. A, a larger fraction of them are going to be farming, gathering food, cooking food, etc. And uh, you, you do have a little bit uh, more of a clock put on you in terms of getting your research done to be able to, to do that, right? Um, you do need to, uh, in the early game, play differently in order to unlock farming and, and be able to do the things that you want to do. But other than that, right, there's not, there's not much else going on, right? You're still just kind of sitting there and saying, okay, well, let's go ahead and turn on this one. Uh, if above five above 10 these can go back on okay um, it doesn't really change the way that you play the game I'd like to see difficulty settings where fundamentally the way that buildings work changes right where you you have buildings where um, before like on easy mode maybe you don't have to deal with a lot of the waste products produced by a building right but then you put on difficulty, difficult mode, and then it, it adds new things, right? And that could be one of the ways that you work on balance in the game as well, like we talked about earlier with um, power buildings. Maybe you add new downsides to power buildings when you're on a harder difficulty setting. So, you know, uh, your, your coal production, right, your, your coal generators might not consume oxygen on a less difficult setting, but on a really hard setting, they do, right? And then suddenly there's a new thing that you need to be considering and, and, and worrying about in your in your playthroughs, right? I'd like to see things that just fundamentally change the dynamics of how you play the game as one as a difficulty setting sort of thing, right? Um, that challenge you to, to approach the game in new ways, that challenge you to um, do new builds, right? Because I don't think that the, the there's really too much of a change at the higher difficulty settings in this game. It's just um, sort of understanding, in particular in regards to food, what your sort of priorities have to be um, because of the way because of the way it works, right? So, um, new world customization options, right? Size, biomes, this and that. Um, new difficulty settings and, and that might interact with the new balance. Uh, new duplicate selections. Um, I'd also kind of like for in-game um, cosmetic stuff. Right, so like uh, the, this stuff over here, right? I have a table with chairs. There's not that much really to this. It's decor plus five, right? I have a new light fixture, right? Like I would like to produce these. I'd like to be able to produce security doors and really cool looking ladders and maybe not vending machines, but you know what I mean? Like tables, chairs, all this stuff. They have a lot of assets in the game that I kind of want to build and think they're cool, right? Um, making those a buildable thing I think would be a pretty good improvement um, I know that's minor but uh, there are some other minor cosmetic things right like the ability to um, mirror your buildings of liquid reservoirs and gas reservoirs right like to flip these um, left to right so like this this would show up on this side and your inputs would be different little things like that I think would be nice uh, likewise, um, I think the the water sieve always has the same animation regardless of where you're inputting your water, right? You can flip your, your water sieve, but the animation is always like from left to right. Um, having that mirrored when you flip it would kind of be cool. Again, little cosmetic things, the ability to build little computer desks and light fixtures and things like that. Um, I think would be a plus. I don't think it's that difficult to add in. I think you basically just go to research and you have like, you know, somewhere in furniture, home luxuries, or like maybe another thing after home luxuries, you put in another research category right here and you'd say, uh, this is where you can build like the fancier stuff. And you can make it, you can, if you want to balance it, you can just make it so it doesn't really provide that huge of a, um, a decor boost. Right, like it's it's a little bit better than everything else, but it also requires it costs something like really high up, right? Like maybe it requires steel to build your really nice ladders, right? Maybe it requires uh, plastics and steel to build all your. Well, I, have, I have a gap here. I never noticed this um, to build some of your nice stuff, right? I think that would be pretty neat. Um, just little cosmetic things like that. Also, sorry, on the topic of cosmetic things, I don't like that these bunker doors are four wide, but the rocket is seven wide. Make the bunker doors seven wide, and that way I can have just a seven wide bunker door here, and then this would be more um, 
you know, bunker tile. I don't understand why this is a different length than the, than the rocket. Minor stuff, minor stuff. Let's uh, very minor stuff, but you know, it it. I think it would. I think it would help. Um, let me go around. I'll leave this here because this could be a useful system. Well, no, let's deconstruct this as well. <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of this. Let's deconstruct this. Um, I've emptied pretty much all of this. Let's go ahead and throttle this back to zero. It yeah, basically just pumped out a lot of oxygen in here. I have some hydrogen in here as well, but that's fine. Floral scents, huh? Oh, there's a buddy bud here. Yeah, uproot this buddy bud. Uproot this buddy bud. No wonder. That's also part of the reason my guy is having allergic attacks, I think. Um. Yeah. Let's do one last pass through. Oh, I have this ugly thing. Construct this. I'll leave the rest of this, I guess. It's not that bad. Um. Yeah, we'll leave all this spaghetti up and about. Kind of want to deconstruct this though. One last pass through the base. Little things to improve and fix and change. What else? What else? What else? Oh, this line. Eh, we'll leave this line. Like this is a line that I'm not gonna get rid of all that because it'd be something pretty useful. I would keep it if I was continuing playing the base. Um. Oh, this stuff. Um. Sure. Deconstruct these as well. We'll have to probably go through and mop stuff up. But I think I can live with that. Let's deconstruct these. Okay. Power wise. Any little snippets I need to get rid of still. Can deconstruct this. This all seems fine. The, these are left over from the, um, uh, the, the, these are already spawned in the game. We didn't build them, so I'm not going to get rid of them. Weird. Um, anything else? Anything else? Before we're done with the base, pretty much forever. Let's go ahead and let them work on that for a little bit. That's fine, that's fine, this is fine. This is all fine. All right. I think we are, uh... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I think we're about ready to go. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay. I think we are set. Oh, I do have this area over here. Um... Yeah, this is a mess, isn't it? Okay. Deconstruct... Construct this stuff here. No automation wire connected, that's fine. Deconstruct this gas pump. Let's go to automation. Deconstruct this. Let's go to ventilation. Deconstruct this, I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're about to wrap things up here. This has been a pretty fun base. We're kind of leaving it on a weird note. Like, my guys are starting to run out of coal and food and all this stuff, and I haven't dealt with a stress problem because of Bubbles. Bubbles is all super stressed out. But, uh... There's obviously a lot of things we have left to do with this base. We're kind of ending things a little bit early here. But it looks good. I've had a lot of fun. Storage, this is all running. We could launch our rocket. Do I have Stinky still in here? Stinky, you can run and be free. I don't know why we kept you cooped up in there. Is Stinky in here? He is in here. Okay. Yeah, run off, Stinky. We're not going to launch the rocket. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's 
mop up these as well. Mop up all this, please. And yeah, I think once we've got that done, we're uh, we're pretty much set. I guess I haven't used the vacillator recharges. I do have that that I could do. I have a bunch of vacillator recharges sitting around the base somewhere. Eh, that's fine. I'll leave I'll leave their brains unscrambled. Oh, um, yeah, that's from that. Okay, let's just ignore this. <laughs> I won't deal with it. I'm not gonna touch that. Yeah, this stuff needs to be fixed. Oh, uh, you know, while we're at it. Uproot. 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 Let's move them all somewhere that makes a little bit more sense. Like, over here, I guess. I don't really need a lot of cooling here, but it's fine. What is this? 150 degrees Celsius, 78.5, sure. Turn these off. Mostly off. What's going on? Oh, it's still 51, okay. Yeah. I've had fun. I'm still gonna miss this base, even though we're abandoning it because I wanna. I can't wait for the next next. I wait, can't wait for my next base for the game to release. Oh, I have so many plans. So many things I want to do. Yeah, they're building it. All right, wart seed, plant. Anything else? I think we're done. I think we're done, ladies and gentlemen. I think we have, uh... We have finished our playthrough. Mop up this stuff. Get the last little bits of stuff done. And then we're good. Plant some wart seeds. I will admit, though, there are a lot of really ugly things going on in this base as well. <laughs> like, this is not a proper med bay. Uh, we don't have decoration for this room. We don't actually, I think, have enough rooms for everybody, even. Which is a little awkward. We're kind of running low on water-ish. Yeah. A lot of things to left to do to work on in this base. <laughs> We've kind of just ignored all of them. Anyways, it's fine. Our poor slicksters, the CO2 isn't getting down to them. Oh, we have so many. How's this going along? This is at 200 degrees now. That's pretty good. So over the course of about 50 cycles, this went up 100 slash 120 degrees, somewhere around there. So I think this will work. Off camera, I'm going to just let this run for a long time and uh, see how well it does, if it lives up to expectations. But uh, yeah, this is a really simple build. I think that's definitely one of the things that I'll include in future runs. Okay. Anything else I want to set up? Anything else I want to do? Last chance for me to change anything about this base. I think we're good. I think we are set. Yeah, I think we're done. Alright, that's it. This is the last gameplay episode for our Auction Not Include Let's Play series. Our base, the Artemis Protocol, is done. In the next video, I'm just going to do a base showcase. Go over everything, go over all the builds. Um, show where we've finished on everything. Oh, sorry. One other thing. 
I, I just looked down at my list. Um, one last thing I think that should be added to the game before we leave. Um, this isn't relevant right now because we haven't really collected any space materials. But I would like to see um, airlocks that actually like really function as airlocks. You would require visco gel to build them, but like a visco gel airlock that actually like you could open it and the guy would pass through, but then no air would pass through. I think that would be really cool. Um, as as opposed to just you stack visco gel on top of uh, itself and then you create an airlock that way, an actual building that you build with the visco gel. I think that's a good addition as well. All right, that's it for this episode. We are done. Catch you guys next time for the base recap, the base uh, showcase. And then uh, after that, a sort of an epilogue, a lessons learned video. But uh, we're good to go. All right, signing off. <laughs>